Investing in Australian property can be a fantastic way to accumulate wealth over time. But is it the, ro- the right way or the right asset to be investing in when it comes to our retirement? Well, let's dive into the numbers. Hi there, Jared Brown here, Australian expat financial planner based here in Singapore. Thank you for tuning into the video. Today, I want to talk about investing in residential Australian property for our retirement. Now, when it comes to residential property, one of the most attractive elements to it is not the rental income we're getting. That simply covers the cost of holding the asset, or at least a portion of. The power of residential property is in the leveraged growth. Leveraged growth meaning we can put in 20% or maybe less if we're paying lenders mortgage insurance, put in that deposit, borrow the other 80 or maybe more and generate growth on that full amount. We might put in $200,000 plus the purchase costs, go and borrow 800,000 and now we're generating growth on a million dollars. That can be really powerful over time. But what about retirement? Well, if we have that million dollars, let's say invested, in a property or a couple of residential properties, and that's generating a rental yield of let's say 4%, which is fairly strong in this market. If this were in Melbourne or Sydney, it's probably gonna be closer to 3% in today's market. But let's work on four. So now we have council rates, water rates, property management, repairs and maintenance, landlord's insurance, contents insurance, building insurance, all of these costs that need to be incurred, and then of course, Something breaks, needs repainting, the air conditioning needs to be replaced, the pool needs repairing, whatever it may be, all of these costs continue to come out over time. And then of course, we have tax on that rental income. So what all of this boils down to is that even though we might start at a 4% gross rental yield, meaning before tax, before costs, that might actually look more like 1%, which is the case in most scenarios, when we factor in all of these costs. Now again, it's not to say the property is a bad place to invest for retirement, but if we're using the 1% rule instead of the 4% rule, then what that means is we need four times the amount of wealth invested in property compared to say superannuation invested in a share portfolio. So let's say that we want to have a comfortable retirement lifestyle in Australia, and to do so we need $120,000 a year, for argument's sake. So $10,000 a month after tax. Now, if we use the 4% rule, we can quickly work out that to generate $120,000 a year, that I need $3 million invested to give me that 120. Now, if I own a property and let's say it's in Perth, uh, maybe even parts of Queensland at the moment, generating a 4% yield, and let's say that boils down to two, once I factored in those costs, Well, in that scenario, I now need $6 million to generate that same 120, because now I'm working on a 2% rule. But what if my property is in Sydney or Melbourne and it's a a great quality growth asset, but the yield is not so flash? Now, instead of 2%, I'm only getting 1% after the costs. Well, that means that to generate that same $120,000 a year, now I need $12 million. So again, it is not to say property is bad, shares are good, or the opposite, but if you are planning for the majority of your retirement income to come from residential property, then you definitely need time on your side and you need to be working towards that higher figure. So don't ignore the costs. Don't make the mistake of assuming that just because rental income comes in, vacancy rates are low, everyone needs somewhere to live, that property in your retirement is going to be a good place to invest. Thank you for tuning in. Drop me a note with any questions you've got. Do remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel. I look forward to seeing you in the next one.